<clears throat> okay, we're going to start with chapter 2 and 7, which is finding a percent of a number. As we do this lesson, think about this one question. When is it better to use a, fra when is it better to use a fraction, decimal, or percent? We have two goals for this lesson. Goal number one is to find the percent of a number, and goal number two is to know what to do with percents greater than 100% or less than 1%. Okay, so we're going to go with the first goal. I'm going to start with that. We're finding the percent of a number. Now, what is that? We're trying to figure out how much we have based on the percent. We can use fractions and decimals to find the percent of a number. Okay, now starting with the got it's on page 148, 250. We're going to do A through E. Now, letter A goes over goal number one. Find the students at York Middle School that have this as a snack. Okay. Here's a circle graph. All right. How many students are we talking about? 300. Okay. So, out of 300 students, we want to know how many like chips. Okay. Now, according to the circle graph, 18% of 300 of those students like chips. Now, I shortened the out of because there's no reason to write the out anymore. Okay. I want you to know where the of came from. It's out. Think of it as out of. So out of 300, 18% like chips. Okay. Now, we're going to use the fraction method real fast. 18% by definition is 18 Per hundred. Now let's think about what that means real fast. So for every hundred students, 18 like chips. Now, I'm going to write this here. Again, we're talking about 300 students total. Now some of you can already see, oh wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. If for hundred students we have 18, we have 300, probably have to multiply this by three to get the answer. Well, hold on, show the work. I know you, if you figured it out, that's great, but still show the work. All right. Now I could simplify this. I could, but I'm not going to, and I'll tell you why. 18 over 100, you know I like setting up equivalent ratio of fractions, if I can ratios, I guess, in this case. It's almost the same thing. We're talking about 300 students, okay? So why simplify when I can scale up easily from here? The whole point of simplifying is to make it easy to scale up or scale down, to make the math easier. But I don't want to, have to do extra work if I don't have to. I can scale up 100 by 3 by factor to get 300. That means I'm going to apply 18 by 3 to get 54. All right. Now, what does that mean? That means I have 54 students that like chips. All right, that was using fractions. When you write the percent as a fraction, I'm gonna write the percent as a decimal. You can do it that way too. Okay, here we go. This might be easier for you, this might be harder for you. I don't know, you'll have to decide what works best for you. Hence the essential question, when is it better? It's all on you. 18% of 300. Okay. Change 18% to a decimal number. Again, if you remember, take away the, dec the percent symbol at a decimal point. I mean, it's always there, but you're actually physically going to write it this time. Move decimal point two spots to the left. So now I have 0 0.18. Change the of to times, multiplication. 300. Now you're going to have to do the math. Okay. 300 has more digits, has three digits. 1800 has two. I'm not going to count the zero because so, anything times zero is going to be zero anyways. So I'll put the one with least digits on the bottom. Now, does the order matter? No, but for me, it's easier putting the one with least digits on the bottom. All right. 8 times 0, 8 times 0, 8 times 3 is 24. Okay. I'm done with the ones place. I'm just imagining in my head that this point's not there. This will be the ones place. All right. So I'm going to put a little place, Valley Hollow saying I'm done with that. I'm going to move on to the tens. 1 times 0, 1 times 0, 1 times 3. And you add 0, 0, 4, 5. 54 hundredths. But we know that's not right. We're talking about decimal numbers. We've multiplied 300 times a decimal number. Okay? And this decimal number is less than 1, so the answer is going to be less than this. There's no way that's going to make the answer. It doesn't make any sense. So. Two place values, one, two, one, two, fifty-four point zero zero, or just fifty-four if I take out the extra zeros at the end. I don't need them. I just have a whole number. Okay? 
So when you do this, you can use the percent as a decimal number or the percent as a fraction. Either way works. Okay, now we're going to go over goal number two. Dealing with percents greater than 100% and percents that are less than 1%. I just want to review something before we move on. <clears throat> Again, when you have 100%, it means you have the whole thing. You have one whole. Again, one whole, one in one entero in Spanish if you want, is 100%. So example, one dollar is 100 bit pennies. So one whole dollar is 100%, 100 percent, 100 per pennies? No, that's not right. But you know what you know what I'm saying. So one whole is 100 percent. If you have more than 100 percent, you're going to have more than one whole. So if you were to say you have more than 100 percent, what am I trying to say here? Like if you have 125 125 percent, the example I just showed right there, you have 100 percent right here, plus 25 percent more. Okay. 125% is more than or greater than 100%. That means 125% is greater than 1. So, thinking of money, 125% would mean you have more than a dollar. Okay? So, 125% is 100% plus 25%. 100% is just 1, or in this case, $1. 25% is 2,500, hundredths, which would be 25 cents. Together, that would be a dollar twenty-five, which is more than a dollar. Okay? When you see a percent that's less than a percent, it's chances are it's a decimal number. Why is that? Okay, well, let's think about this. If 1% is a penny and you have less than 1%, that means you have less than one penny. You'll have a decimal. And again, a decimal is a part of something. Okay? So this is why you'll see a decimal, sorry, you'll see a percent with a decimal point in it. It's not that it's a decimal number, it just means you have less than 1%, less than a penny, if it'll help you visualize that. All right, so let's get started with letter B, I believe. All right, 125% of 550. All right, so let's write this down. 128% of 550. All right, I notice I have more than 100%. And if I have more than 100%, it means I have more than one hole. In this case, the hole we're talking about is 550. So our answer is going to be bigger than that. Okay, so I'm going to write this as a fraction and see what happens. 128% is 128 per 100 of 550. Again, this might not work. If it doesn't work, it's okay. We'll figure this out. All right. I can simplify this. Okay. I can simplify it by, I believe, 2. Let's keep it simple. Which would be 64 over 50. There's still even numbers, so I can divide that again by 2. Again, if you know the GCF, this becomes much easier. Could have divided by 4, but that's okay. So 32 25ths of 550. Okay, now you're thinking, that's a mess. Not necessarily. Again, if we make two equivalent fractions, we can make this work. I'll show you. Thirty-two, twenty-fifths. By the way, it's it's known as an improper fraction, but there's really nothing improper about it. It's just not written in the way you would think a traditional fraction should be. It still gives you the same information you need. Oh, what am I doing? Got distracted by the improper thing. Since the whole we're talking about is five hundred fifty, that would be five hundred. That would be one hundred percent. Then we have to see how, how by how much can we scale up twenty-five to get to one hundred fifty. All right, now. I could do the math right now, but that'll take a little bit of time, and you can always verify if you don't believe me, but what I'm doing then is figuring out how many groups of 25 can I make from 550. That would be a division problem. So if I divide this by 25, my answer becomes 22. So I can make 22 groups of 25 to get to that. And whatever I do to the denominator, I do the numerator, so 32 times 22. And again, just to save time, I already went ahead and did the math earlier. My answer is 704. Now, if you notice, the answer that I got is larger than what I started out with, which makes sense. 125, 20, 120% more than one whole, so it's going to be more than this. And there it is. You can verify that. By the way, you could have also just kept it simple if you really wanted to. Change this to a decimal number. It would become 1.28 times 550. You do the math, and you'll get the same answer. Okay, I just like doing fractions. But that's just me. You do what you think works best for you. Okay? Letter C. 
letter C. Letter C, we have 0.3% of 200. Okay. I look at the percent, definitely less, less than 1%, so it's going to be less than a penny. So if this were, how can I say this? It's going to be way less than this. My answer will not be anywhere close to that. Okay. So it might be a fraction of this, it definitely will be. I'm willing to bet it's going to be less than one. Okay. If this is 1% of 200, if this was 1%, 1% 1 of 100 would be a penny. Two of them would be two pennies, but this is not even half a penny. So this can be less than one, but we'll, we'll find out. All right. I'm going to write this as a fraction, just for the sake of argument. And see, if it works, great. Three-tenths of a percent is three-tenths per hundred of 200. Now, I, I can't simplify this, but I don't need to. I'm going to show you why. If I set up two equal fractions with 200 being the whole, right? I can scale up 100 by 2 to get 200, and then I multiply the 3 tenths by 2 to get 6 tenths. And there's your answer, again. You can change this to a decimal, by the way, it can be, well, you can do that on your own. Sorry, but it would be, <laughs> God, my OCD wants me to do it, but no, 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 I'm gonna keep this short. I don't want this to be a 30 minute video. All right, letter D, 0.85% of 600. Again, less than 1%. This is going to be less than a penny. So, less than a penny for every 100 of 600. Let's say 6. If I had a penny, it would be 6. 1% would be 6. But since it's less than 1, the answer is going to be less than 6. And we're going to do this right now. We're going to find out. So, again, I'm going to leave it as a fraction. I like fractions. Maybe it's just me. If you don't, that's okay. Again, move decimal point two spots to the left. You have 0 0.085 times 600, and you can do the work there. But for me, this is easy. Easier, excuse me, I shouldn't say easy. It's easier for me. You do what works best for you. Okay, again, two equal fractions. I could try and simplify this, but again, why do extra work if I don't have to? Let me see if I can scale up easily. Yep, I can scale up easily. I'll leave it at that. And when I do the math, well, you know what, I'll just do the math. You can see it didn't take that long. 0 0.85 times 6. Why is this on top? This has two digits that I can work with. I kind of ignore the 0 for the moment. This has one digit. It goes on the bottom. Again, you can do it either way. The order does not matter, but I like the number with more dig most digits on top. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 8 48 plus 3 51. I have two place values. 1, 2. 1, 2. So the answer is... 5.1. Now see what I tell you. It's going to be less than 6 cents. Less than 6 pennies. Okay. Alright, let's lead us to letter E. I believe it's a word problem. Let's see if I can read it to you. Alright. In the same meet, 15% of the team from Delaware County competed in tennis. If there were 20 members of the, on the team, how many competed in tennis? Okay. Word problem, so we gotta visualize this if we can. All right, we have a team. And again, you don't have to make drawings, but for me, I, I find that it helps me f focus a little bit more. So we have a team of 20. A team of 20, okay? Now I'm just gonna draw a bar just for the sake of argument, just to visualize it even more. A team of 20 people. If I have all 20 people, that's 100% of the team, okay? But it says only 20 members, sorry, it says only 15% of these 20 members of the team competed in tennis. So 15%. So just make sure we read it again. In the same meet, 15% of the team from Delaware County competed in tennis. If there are 20 members of the team, how many competed in tennis? All right, so 15%, this group here competed in tennis. This other group competed in other sports. By the way, this problem goes with example five on page 150. So if what I'm saying doesn't make sense, you have to go back and read example five. Okay, but anyways, 15% of the team out of 100. So for every 100 people, 15 would have played tennis, but there's only 20. 
okay? So what we're doing here is 15% of this total right there played tennis. So how do we figure this out? 15% of this, of the 20, competed in tennis. Now, again, you know, by now I'm going to do the fractions because I like it. But you can change it to a decimal point. If you change this to, sorry, decimal number, if you change 15% to a decimal number, it becomes 0 0.15 or 15 hundredths. Okay, 15 hundredths, and there it is. Just see it as a decimal number, and you're fine. Of 20. All right. 15 hundredths. I can simplify that by 5, a factor of 5. And again, two equivalent fractions. If I can, I'll probably see what I can get. And what do you know? Oh, 3. Okay. Three members play tennis. Again, before I move on, just keep this in mind. Percent per hundred. More than 100%, more than one. So if you see here, we have 100%. 100% right there. We only want a part of it. But if all 100% is 20, then we want something less than 20. If our number was, let's say, 30, then I know I did something wrong. Because then we want less than 100%, not more. Okay? I hope this helps.